hope lies in dreams, in imagination, and in the courage of those who dare to make dreams into reality. Cord blood is the blood within the placenta of a newborn baby. These cells enable us to treat and cure primarily children, but adults now as well, who have otherwise fatal diseases. And if we didn't have these cells available, most of these patients would die. The first transplant was done for a child who had a genetic disease where his uh, bone marrow stopped working. And in that case, the uh, cord blood was collected from a sibling who was born and that cord blood was used to actually cure that young child. During this period, through the 1990s, as more and more transplants were done into the, the 2000s, the technology got better and better. So the results got better and better. And we found that anything that we could do a transplant for using bone marrow or using peripheral blood stem cells, we were able to do it with cord blood. So cord blood became a very acceptable, and I'd say now state-of-the-art way of doing stem cell transplants for people that need hematopoietic transplants where they need a new blood or immune system to treat things like leukemia, lymphomas, myelomas, and lots of different immunodeficiencies. In the late 1990s, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center began looking into cord blood salvage and storage. Those particular cells were then known to be life-saving. In 2001, the governor appropriated a million dollars to start the Texas Cord Blood Bank. Several foundations and private philanthropic donors saw the vision and supported this life-saving program. People in the medical community who knew that we needed a place in Texas, a place that was available for all Texans to use, were looking to institutions across the state and the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center stepped up to the plate to take on this mission of saving lives through the banking of cord blood. Well, I can hardly believe it's been 10 years and exciting to think that this wonderful institution is now just a mature and growing and, and strong and just like the lives that the cord blood is saving. When Zachary was born, we knew immediately that he was sick. Everywhere the nurses were touching him, he was bruising. Nobody really knew what was wrong with Zach. His whole bloodline just wasn't working well. We went every other day to the clinic to have blood work done, but six months into that, we still had no idea of what was wrong. His hematologist oncologist had sent a bone marrow biopsy to Germany, and it turned out that he had a very rare bone marrow failure syndrome called amegakaryocytic thrombocytopenia. We had two treatment options. We could continue to treat Zachary with blood and with platelets for the rest of his life, or he could get a bone marrow transplant. And so we had him tested, and then we as his parents were tested, and I think one of our hardest days was getting that letter in the mail from the National Marrow Program saying, sorry. You're not a match for you and your child. We were at a loss. At that time, we were seeing a transplant doctor here in San Antonio, Dr. Wall, and uh, she said, don't worry about it. She said, don't worry about it. She said, there are cord blood banks out there now. She said, don't worry about it. The month went on, and we got a phone call one day, and she said, guess what? She said, we didn't find one match. We found three matches for Zach. Today, Zach is in the fourth grade. He's 10 and he's just a joy. I wouldn't have my child today if another mother hadn't said yes, absolutely. I certainly am thankful and thank God for cord blood. Today, we now have over 15 hospitals participating as collection sites. Mothers are given an opportunity to donate their life-saving cord blood that will go on to save not only the lives of children, but the lives of adults. We've really been using cord blood stem cells to do the types of transplants that we were doing with bone marrow and peripheral blood. But over the past half a dozen years or so, an entire new field called regenerative medicine has really come to fore. Because these stem cells are such powerful little creatures, we're hoping to be able to utilize them to treat diseases that were never thought to be treatable before. Diseases like diabetes, traumatic brain injuries, injuries to bones and joints, autoimmune diseases like lupus and sclerosis. So this is the future. The 
future to be able to treat diseases that have never been thought to be treatable before. The future of cord blood banking is limitless. Only state-of-the-art technology is used to collect, process, test, and store the cord blood units, and that technology comes at a great expense. But its goal is to provide the highest quality, life-saving resource to patients who are in need. I think of the payoff as someone that treats children as giving them 50, 60, 70 years of life. I don't even think you, that's priceless. Happy 10th birthday, Texas Cord Blood Bank. Congratulations on 10 years of great service to our community. Happy 10th anniversary, Texas Cord Blood Bank. Happy birthday, Texas Cord Blood Bank. Congratulations on your 10th anniversary. Happy 10th birthday, Texas Cord Blood Bank. Happy birthday to the Texas Cord Blood Bank. Congratulations on 10 great years of making a difference in our community. On behalf of a very proud San Antonio, we wish you many more.